Hey everybody, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 254, and today we're doing battle in the Rising Tides Timewinder Gauntlet. And so, uh, the, the same idea as the Gauntlet before, uh, Riot didn't switch this to best of three, so we'll be bringing the three decks, uh, the, the pick and ban phase will happen, uh, and then we'll play a best of one uh, out of the remaining decks. And then also, as with the last one, the cards are in their current state, uh, so I do suspect we'll see a lot of uh, Swain and the Leviathan running around as they were... Uh, recently upgraded uh, in the past couple of months or so, both of them catching a uh, a pretty serious buff along the way. And so uh, to, to get like hype, get excited for it, I was wanting to bring a full-on uh, Bilgewater Champions lineup, uh, and that's what we're doing today. And so first and foremost, we're going to be playing Sejuani Gangplank. Uh, this is a deck that uh, didn't really start to pop off until... Uh, the the Tusk Raider hit. I, I, I'm not sure if, because uh, I didn't play uh, a ton of Constructed. I didn't really play Constructed at all at this time. We just played Expedition. But uh, I don't believe this was a deck that really made its way competitively into Constructed. I feel like this was always a kind of a Tier 2 deck. Uh, I don't know if that was because uh, people just didn't figure out how to uh, go for this champion thing, or I, I don't know the history on it. I, I can stop speculating, I guess. But uh, I feel like the big upgrade to it was Tusk Speaker, Tusk Raider, whatever that two-cost overwhelm unit is that does damage when he comes into play. Uh, I feel like that's what made it pop off, but that's not readily available. But I, I do think that this is still an exceptionally strong uh, collection of champions. This is a very champion-centric deck. With this, we're going to do everything we can uh, to get our champions leveled up by the fifth turn. And so with that in mind, uh, we are playing the full three copies of Warning Shot and Parlay. Uh, and we do have this full nine uh, one-drop units to help assist in the event that we don't have one of those spells. Otherwise, uh, this is a deck that's pretty easy for us to kind of run out of value, run out of things to do. Uh, and so we do have a nice uh, card draw package in here as well between the three copies of Pool Shark, three copies of Black Market Merchant, three copies of Urinal Grifter, along with the two copies of Salvage. And so ideally, uh, we can kind of come in and just spew all of our cards on the board, say, LOL, here's everything that I'm doing. Can you stop it? And then assuming they will, because our cards are all garbage, uh, we can have one of these champions come in and do cleanup duty. Uh, the last thing I, I want to note before we move away from this deck is this is something we're going to be seeing uh, a ton uh, across our list here today, uh, and uh, all of our lists are bringing it actually, and then what you're going to see a lot of in this format uh, is the usage of Petty Officer. This comes down, either summons a unit or a powder keg, and then that powder keg summon uh, can then be used in turn with something like Make It Rain. And so we can get these really cheap and efficient uh, two damage AoE bursts. Uh, and we're going to try and take advantage of that quite a bit. And so your two health units aren't super safe. There are, again, going to be Make It Rains literally everywhere in this format. And you do have to keep in mind that those Make It Rains do have the potential to be boosted from Petty Officers uh, or from uh, the Dreadway Deckhand, the two cost 2-2 two -two that also generates a Powder Keg. Uh, so, deck number two, we're going to be playing Scouts. Everybody should have known Scouts was going to be here. I wasn't going to make one of these Rising Tides videos and not play it. Uh, it is a little bit different. It's most certainly weaker than it should have been way back in the day. In assembling this deck, the thing that I couldn't piece together, the thing I, I couldn't tell if nobody just ever did, was play Zap Spray Thin with three mana Relentless Pursuit. Uh, I don't know if that was legal at the time, but that had to have been the most fucking absurd thing on the planet that literally no one was ever doing. It's like nobody figured out that you could play Zap Sprayfin in one of these decks until like Mega Mogwai did it with the Inspired Light. And that was just within the past six months. And so I, I don't know like what was happening back then. I don't know what was going on. I don't know why people didn't want to just be drawing rally cards out of nowhere. But uh, I, uh, to the best of my knowledge, the, the Relentless Pursuit was still three mana then and not four. And so I, I don't know. We can't do it here. Uh, the Zap is just not that impressive in this deck when you aren't picking up things like uh, Inspired Light and even good combat tricks like Sharp Sight. And so uh, we're not playing Zap in this one. Uh, and this list is going to be focused a little bit more on uh, getting double big attacks out of our scout units. And so uh, we do have a, a nice scout package in here with the Island Navigator, uh, Genevieve, Quinn, and then the uh, no Quinn birds in sight. But uh, what you're going to see out of a lot more of these games is we're going to try and get three and four scout units on the board and then follow up with a big back-to-back uh, -to, -back to, to give them a big collection of stats or uh, afford Demacia. So we get to attack with all of those scout units twice. Uh, just uh, not a lot of uh, unit boosting these days. 
uh, since you don't have access to the inspired light here. But otherwise, still you know, kind of the same game plan. We have a pretty strong early game challengers package with the, uh, the Fleet Feather Tracker and the Hired Guns. We can protect them with the Bright Steel Protector. We're looking to build up that board width and then boost all of our board width with a big, uh, a big combat trick. But as we noticed in that previous one, uh, make it rain all over the place. We have our full three copies here. We have the two copies of Ranger's Resolve to protect from the opposing make it rains. And then we also have the Petty Officer, a, uh, a unit summoner, much in the same vein as Mariah Warden. But he can also generate those powder kegs to make usage of with the make it rain. Last but not least, we're going to be playing uh, Swain, Twisted Fate, Katarina. Uh, this is our uh, control deck offering of the format, if you will. Uh, get really, really uh, strong and powerful AoEs. Uh, with this one, we have both Make It Rain and Twisted Fate for the AoEs. And so since we're doubling up on the AoEs, we're doubling up on the Powder Kegs. And so we're going to have the Dreadway Deckhand and uh, the Petty Officer coming out of this deck uh, as the means to take advantage of those. And then that's going to be our kind of premier way to actually come in and level up the Swain. Uh, as you see Swain, Misfortune, and the like in constructed decks these days, you have a lot more ways, I should say, a lot more good ways to deal non-combat damage, where you have the uh, the Tom Kench-style units that deal damage to themselves when they come under the board, or you can play cards like Annie. Uh, here, we're really going to be kind of counting on our AoE as the means to level up our Swain. And so it's not going to be nearly as reliable. It's not going to happen nearly as often, but uh, he's just too powerful of a card to pass up. And his uh, uh, initial state, I believe, I can't remember what his stats were back in the day or what all the changes were to him. I think it's just the overwhelm uh, on the flip, but the Leviathan is the actual gigantic upgrade here, now costing seven mana instead of eight. And so that's why I suspect we'll see a lot of those. Uh, but since he's not going to level up as super reliably, we're bringing in a single copy of Katarina. Uh, otherwise, you know, just a good collection of board stall in here. Say, hey, let's just come out here and not die uh, until we can get some of these high-powered champions on the board. And so those are the decks. That's what we're doing battle with today. Let's go ahead and jump on in, see if we can't get some good games, see if we can't get that scouts deck right out here and in action boom okay okay good stuff nice beach scene out here the 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 weather out here in kansas city everyone wants to hear about the weather it's currently negative two uh that's in freedom units not celsius so it's really fucking cold uh the wind chill is negative 22 <laughs> and so i need that beach scene to make things just a little bit warmer for me and so with this, I don't know what no champion deck is. I assume it's some kind of really uh, aggressively styled number. Uh, this is probably Spiders with Elise and then uh, a Challengers-esque Shen deck over here. So I feel fine to take Scouts into all of this. We'll just ban out uh, the unknown deck from the middle. Okay. Up against what looks to be the old spiders. So we'll hang on to a single copy of Hired Gun. I can see an argument for like hanging on to Vanguard Sergeant as we're up against Elise, but I think that's just like a little bit too slow. I'm going to get rid of him, see if we can't dig up a misfortune. She's going to be uh, the, the kind of important piece to the early game puzzle here. So I want to, to try and get her on board if we can. Now with this, I'm just going to go ahead and bring in an open. Uh, it, it's like... We, the, the, the passes here don't quite work how we want them to, and so I think this is a reasonable spot to probably just bank. We did just pick up the Ranger's Resolve uh, to protect against whatever he's doing, and then the Vanguard Sergeant can come down this turn as well. We're going to have to try and look to get some, some kind of value positive combats here, right? We need a, a, a big boost from something like Ranger's Resolve. It's just, uh, we, we can't be out here just trading back and forth against this deck without a Misfortune down. And so, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We can drop the Petty Officer here. I'm going to go for units. And then I'm I'm just not going to attack. We're going to try and come back to our, our, our turn six with Genevieve. And have that be the time that we get our good attacks. I think that we still stand like that, even though we did just pick up the Bark Beast. Like, we, we have the option now to say hook a House Spider uh, to the left, a Bark Beast attacks to the right. It's going to grow because our tracker is going to die. Might be worthwhile. But let's see. If he just, like, passes in this combat, I'm 100% passing uh, against the Elise Draven deck with four mana. They only get the one bank out of this turn and probably can't even really use the mana. All right, they can play things like Whirling Death, but uh, I don't suspect he's going to get a lot of usage out of uh, this big bank. 
So nice work, Petty Officer. Sorry, I'm sorry you don't get to see too much play these days, but, you know, <laughs> the, the times change every once in a while. All right, all right, not bad, not bad. Skitter comes in. You can bring in a Vanguard Sergeant now. But I I think the Bark Beast, yeah, it'll, it'll only have uh, two attack if uh, if we have a unit die, but... We're, we're, we're just going to freak him out now, dropping, <laughs> dropping the, uh, the, the Ranger's Resolve in. I think this is good. Still bringing it. I mean, seems reasonable. So now I guess the, the fresh question is, do we even want to bother with Genevieve? Uh, ooh, we just picked up Quinn. I wasn't expecting that. I was already talking. But <laughs> I, I think this is okay. Uh, as we roll into next turn, uh, we, we have a really tough time having 10 mana. I mean, I guess that's an argument for playing Quinn, right? If we want to, say, uh, add Quinn to the board and then go into next turn and look to both for Demacia and Relentless Pursuit or back-to-back uh, -back and Relentless Pursuit. I think this is good. Let's see what he does. It has to be kind of scary seeing Quinn come down. And it's like he's in that same spot he was in the previous turn as to where, uh, like, does he really want to add units to the board uh, facing down what we have? Or is he willing to just overbank a ton of mana? It looks like he's willing to overbank. And so let's go for the four Demacia Relentless Pursuit now. I dig it. A lot of big boys. Good, good. No responses. No, no uh, blades, edges, or whatever coming in to, to take down our units. I like it. So I guess we'll advertise that the relentless pursuit's about to come in. He's just going to come in and attack at us anyways. But oh my gosh, he doesn't attack. Cool. That's pretty choice, I'm not gonna lie. Could have something like a Nox and Guillotine or Ravenous Flocks to try and take down our Quins and the bird, but still just so super far ahead now that that, that popped off. It says, uh oh. My units are all tiny. <laughs> but man, seeing how good Relentless Pursuit is here, still at four mana, still without the uh, the plus one, plus one bonus. I, I can't imagine playing three mana Relentless Pursuits. I don't know when that change happened. Like, that, that's been so long, I don't remember... Like, it, it wasn't, like, a super relevant expedition change because you you were usually cool to play, like, one or two rallies in expedition and then you had to cut it off there. But uh, I, I just don't... Uh, like, being in the lands of Constructed, it's just been so wild having access to these rallies for so long. I wanted to get Zap in here, man. That's what <laughs> That would have been what... That would have been good. But I think opponent may have disconnected here. They uh, might have might have gone for the old drop the phone in the toilet play. Seems to be the case. The timer is going down pretty quick. Said you boomed me too good, bust. All right, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, the way we at least played on doing this is on next turn. I don't want to open with Genevieve. Uh, there's just no real necessity to do it. I mean, we could open with four Demacia, I guess. We do have the two challengers on board. Uh, but I, I'm leaning definitely towards... Uh... Here, let's just do this. Leaning towards definitely at least making a scout attack in here. 
All right, maybe maybe he dropped his phone in the toilet, wiped the uh, wiped the water off real quick, <laughs> jumped back in the game. All right, GG. All right, on to the next one. What you got for us? It's going to be the same guy. I, I, I was running into a lot of double matches in my practice games, and so uh, and I don't know if people just aren't aware of this, or you know, we're kind of butted up to the holiday season. Yeah, it's that same guy again. So we'll play a different deck. I'm still going to come in and just ban the no champion thing. Uh, I'm not sure what that's going to be. We know that this is spiders over to the left, and then I, I won't play scouts this time if we get the chance to play one of these other ones. So let's bring in the, the Gangplank Sejuani. It, it's probably the weaker choice. I have to imagine that if we're going to uh, play against spiders, we would much rather have the big AoEs deck, but uh, we'll, we'll mix it up. All right, reasonable start. The, the Shell Shocker into the Black Market Merchant. It, it, maybe we should just get rid of the Merchant as well. Like, it's tough. It's like, I, I want a way to deal damage to the opponent on the first turn and the second turn. But if we play a Shell Shocker and then opponent plays a unit, we can't do any damage on the first turn. And so uh, I'd like to find a, a parlay or a warning shot or something. So, uh, you know, ideally, we have a bit of a backup plan if things go wrong with the Shell Shocker. Nice. Good stuff, good stuff. There's the parlay. It turned short, but not a big deal. We're starting to starting to cruise through this one. So no Zeds this turn. It's, uh, I, I'm curious if we're going to see a bunch of like early game challengers. That's what you're uh, typically bringing to the table uh, when you when you have the Shen in the deck. But interesting. So we missed out on the the damage on the last turn. I think it's okay. Uh, we can still get Sejuani leveled up by turn six. So it doesn't feel like it's uh, a, a complete necessity. God, this sucks so much. We already, we already got our damage in. I guess we can make it rain. So now, if we have to get into combat with the Redeemer next turn, it can at least uh, be dealt damage. Oh, that's gross. I don't like anything about that. We probably should have just passed. All right, anything cool? Not particularly. <laughs> I, I I think we'll get to take down this Redeemer in combat, but not uh, not the greatest collection of units. I guess we get a 3-3 Jagged Butcher on the turn. Just hoping for a little more. It's hoping for some Powder Pandemonium. I had to I had to go and look if Powder Pandemonium was in the format. It, it's not, but <laughs> that would have been a that would have been a fun one. We should be good to at least punch the zap damage in here. I don't want to have to send the parlays to face. We're probably just playing this one too heavily for value, but kind of is what it is. This is where the, the the turn could get a little dicey next round, right? We have the, the opportunities to be dropping Sejuani next turn, but it's going to take two cards to get her to flip instead of just one. And so that, that is some argument for that kind of make it rain turn we skipped there earlier in the game. So that if we really needed to prevent the damage here, we couldn't do it. But it seems like that's probably just going to be uh, overly aggressive. What do you see, boy? <laughs> you own what you Where did that come from? I guess, <laughs> I guess, I guess he had it in his hand the whole time. Literally the whole time. Uh, 
but we can still get around this. If he wants to make a scout attack now, we get to shut down his whole board after. And if he comes in with everybody, it's not that big of a deal. Frostbites, bro. It says, uh-oh. How does this Shen still have stats? So I go. What the hell just happened here? Is it because he was already frostbitten once? You can't get frostbitten twice? Frostbite all enemies. That's so weird. Alright, well we're not taking damage here. And this is a, you know, a relevant place to put this damage onto Shen. As we're going to come in with uh, with some big overwhelms next turn. We have you know, a slight decision here. And then if we want to roll the dice with Entreat and see if we can't pick up Gangplank, right? We got a, the 60% or chance to hit Gangplank because then if he gets to attack and do uh, do stuff with the um, the AoE, he's, he's going to be choice, but I'm just going to skip over it. going to generate the warning shot off of the Grifter. We've got two of the four Shadow Isles cards out of our deck, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about it. Uh, now we're just a, a really strong space. do this. Attack Gristle. <laughs> you tell him, Sejuani. Get Gristle out there. So it is a, a slight worry for this upcoming turn. Like It looks like we have Lethal on board. You could probably shift some of this stuff around, but um, push this, this this blocker in front of a three and, and live at one health. But we, uh, we, we kind of could have saved the warning shot and perhaps done damage here to the left and gotten that frostbite in the middle of combat, but we didn't go for it. I think we'll still be okay here, but potential for that being a little sloppy. It is not yet if they are under my protection. Alright, you get to watch that shin flip though. That's what everybody wanted to see. What do we got? Something cool? Green Fang Warden? Eh. Not, not as cool as I was hoping for. <laughs> not as cool as I was hoping for. And Scythria. I mean, that's okay. We're going to salvage. If we hit a, a warning shot or something, we can send the damage right to face. Missed again. We have enough blockers. We have three blockers on this board so far. Well, nothing can block the Silver Wing Diver, but if the the Sithria attacks, I think this is okay. Alright, looks like we're just taking six. Shouldn't be anything else he can do about it. Okay. Let's get some dudes on the board and make an open attack. Man, it's so, it's so unfortunate when you have your opponent at one. I, I didn't even stop to think about it until now. It, like, like it, starting to think like, well, what do we do if things go wrong here? Like, we had both a warning shot and a parlay with the opponent at one <laughs> that we missed for on our attack. It's kind of painful. We, we should be good here. He's going to need like a rally to get himself out of this. And it, it should be tough to rally and stop two of our units with what whatever he has in hand, right? He can put Scythria in front of Sejuani to prevent some. But uh, now with that, he's not going to have two strikes. But what, what I was kind of getting at is like if we really need to, like we have the... The zap to draw something. We could potentially play Gangplank and Entreat. Uh, the Gangplank flip this parlay. That would be another way to send damage to face. We have a few ways to get the damage in there if something went wrong with that attack. Alright. We got it though. GG's my dude.
All right, next battle. Can't play that guy again. <laughs> so what do we got? Scouts, Sea Monsters, and Twisted Fate Swain. Sure. Uh, I'm still going to come in here and just ban the Sea Monsters. I think this is going to be a, a, a fairly uh, common thing that we do in this format. Just uh, a, a fairly tough deck to deal with. I, I, I think Sea Scarab's in the format, right? That's the one that uh, tends to cause a bit of problems. That's typically their big build-around card. But uh, I think I would rather play against uh, Swain Twisted Fate than play against Sea Monsters. Just one of those decks to where, like, we don't have to play Scouts uh, up against the Sea Monsters, but Scouts just has a really tough time winning that kind of matchup. All right. Let's see if we don't get to play a Sweet Mirror match here yet. We haven't got to play uh, with our Swain. Let's see what opponent brings. I can't imagine that you would want to really play uh, Scouts against this imagination off opponent says i do want to play scouts against this but <laughs> sure all right so reasonable enough start we can hang on to the steve there's just so many uh one health units coming out of the deck that i think making sure we have some kind of aoe is okay uh, and if we end up with the space to where we deal two damage to a misfortune with the hired gun then we can get the clean up with twisted fate as well Reasonable enough start. Expenses. We need some of those cheap bros, right? We need the Legion rear guard. That's what. <laughs> that's what the deck's missing today. Sure. We got a, a pretty good selection of bros to, to send into the Larn Duelist. We can either try and hire gun it and attack it down next turn, which is, you know, okay. Uh, or we can just play the Petty off, or we can wait for the Petty Officer, I guess, and then try to uh, AoE down more stuff. I think that's where we'll be. I'm going to drop the Petty Officer. I think that, you know, if it gets an opponent to the spot to where they just don't play any more units, that probably feels like a win. Like, if we just get to pass here, that's okay. Gets in a spot to where we can just switch to using Steve instead of using the Make It Rain. But the longer this drags on, the better space we should be in. It says, uh-oh. Scary things coming at me. I don't want these scary things coming out. <laughs> All the Swains. It's a little unfortunate to draw all of your Swains when uh, when you have the Leviathan in your deck, but it's what happens sometimes, you know. So let's see. He does have the one mana backed up here, so if he has a Ranger's Resolve, this is going to be a, a bit of a problem. But uh, without a Ranger's Resolve, we get a pretty big shutdown on this board. And the, the big thing in terms of our Swain now is we just did an absolute ton of non-combat damage so he's going to get to, he's going to get to level up next turn we can do the probably just want to do the make it rain right now right we'll do one to the the sergeant one to the face that's going to be our two non-combat damage and then we can just play swain and be ready it's kind of interesting with him as well that the ravenous flock his flip is very easy to uh, to play and so uh, you know, we, we were talking about the sadness and having all the Leviathans in our deck and not using the boat to draw our physical copies of Swain. You know, we got an easy way to get him right back into the deck. And so, it's not bad. Enjoy dealing with this, though. <laughs> there's there's not a ton of scout units that can, uh, that can get in front of Swain and stop him from doing the big AoE. Right, you could play uh, a Quinn. Like that's probably the only fight. That's probably the only play. Island Navigator would be big enough as well, but he spent one of those on the previous turn. There just shouldn't be a ton of plays that get in front of this Swain. Just think if he still had that five attack. <laughs> he used to just have a ton of attack. Okay. Safe to attack with both. I'd uh, happily take both of his units off of the board. If he doesn't want to block... Uh, our Twisted Fate, then we get in the extra points of damage. Sounds good to me. Oh, 
all the flocks. So many birds. Is this like a six-eyed bird? You know, it's got three eyeballs on this one side. Or did it just get all three eyeballs on one side of its face? Zero eyeballs on the other side. These are the important questions you should be asking yourself. <laughs> this is the stuff that matters. Dang, wasn't really looking for Nox and Guillotine. I was hoping to pick up a... Uh, uh, hoping to pick up a Make It Rain. So now on this board, like, what does he have to, to want to attack Swain with Quinn? Um, uh, we do want to get the Swain shuffled back into our deck, but if something goes wrong here, we definitely don't want to be left with zero Swains in hand. And so I'm going to play out the fresh Ravenous Flock. We'll hang on to the Swain thing in hand. We can just kind of stop and think to ourselves that if, uh, if he has a way to... Uh, or if we draw the uh, the Leviathan, we should still be able to find a decent target for a Ravenous Flock. So it's kind of nice now. We get to pick and choose uh, how this Swain gets into combat. We can either send him in uh, to the left, nothing, nothing blocking, hook the hired gun out to the right with our hired gun, assume that we'll just kill it in combat, or we could physically hook this unit into Swain. We'll see. Powder Keg's always a good target for Swain as well. It's not a not a particularly strong combatant. Oh shit, our Swain's vulnerable. I guess I'm glad we hung on. <laughs> glad we hung on to this other one. So he's just going to be hitting us with Make It Rain, right? And he hits the Swain, he hits all of our units. Must feel good. Must feel good. But, we got another Swain bro in hand. Alright, ready for combat. <laughs> Hopefully tough for him to deal with. I mean, he's got four Demacia in hand if he really wants to get get clever in terms of uh, the amount of blocking he can do, but I suspect he's not going to want to do that. Things like back-to-back, -back, things like repost, shouldn't have to worry about here. So, looks good. Fresh Quinn. Sure. Again. Go on, then. Always make sure your Quins are fresh. You don't wanna <laughs> You don't wanna have a Quinn lacking in freshness. Well, here's a Leviathan. It's a it's a it's a little unfortunate again that we can't draw our swains with it. That was a uh you know, a, a calculated deck building decision that we made in terms of only playing two copies of Swain. So, you know, take it take it how you want. You you could have, you know, had a swain here, but I think we're still in pretty good shape. He, he's going to have to do a lot of work if he wants to uh take the swain down on this board, which he can. I mean, he's got the the variety of challengers that it takes, but ultimately we might be able to protect him with this Nox and Fervor if he uh, whatever he sends in with the first one we can kind of ignore. Uh, for the second attack. Indecision is the first of many weaknesses. So I think he'll make it through. And if we go into the next turn with both Swain and the Leviathan, then this game should be done. So right now, no matter how he does it, uh, we, we've got a kill on whatever he puts in front of Swain. And so uh, we can Nox and Fervor down the Valor. If he sent Quinn in, we could use uh, the Ravenous Flock or use the Nox and Guillotine. We should have been safe either way. Let's 
see you, bird. <laughs> now we get the, the fresh stuns with the Swain Leviathan. Two of his backline bros are going to get hit with the stuns. Just an absolute mountain of stats at this point. Twisted Fate turns up to the party. No complaints whatsoever. All of our hits on Zap are exceptionally good here. The, the Nox and Fervor would be the worst one. But between having like Twisted Fate and the Make It Rain and the Ravenous Flock, we have ways to just... Like another point of damage to face is going to stun a unit. Another point of damage to face will stun a unit. It should just be uh, incredibly tough for opponent to, uh, to have any blockers this turn. Looks like it was. GG. Remember the day. Remember the day that Swain turned up. <laughs> All right, battle number four underway. Got each of the decks into battle. Victory with each of them. Feels nice, man. Feels good. Nothing wrong with a little victory. And what do we got here? Well, I guess I'm okay with this. Just keep on banning the sea monsters. <laughs> Why not? Let's get that out of here. All right, and so this is one of these spots where I don't feel like Scouts is going to be the super strong here. I'm not entirely certain what why Garen has uh, the Shadow Isles in it, but uh, I'm going to go with the, the Swain Twisted Fate again. It just strikes me as, like, it's probably not Elites. If it's not Elites, then we'd be okay with Scouts, but Scouts is one of those decks that uh, can't just run into the big mountain of stats as the opponent is trying to put a bunch of... Uh, uh, like 3-3s three and 4-4s four and the like on the board. And we're putting our 2-2s our two and stuff down. It's just we, we never win a combat. It's kind of like, again, it's like it's okay to trade. And it's okay to um, win. But if you're not getting those winning combats, it's just such a pain. Alright, a reasonable draw on the House Spider. We had a fairly awkward mulligan here uh, to where... And we hung on to the Petty Officer just to make sure we had some plays, but then picking up the Ravenous Flocks was not really ideal. Maybe they'll they'll turn themselves around here in a moment. No. <laughs> just that's a that's a good joke. Uh, you you make me ha ha there, Gomez Z. <laughs> get that get that nonsense out of here. All right, so the, the new question, do we want to add units this turn? And I think we do, right? We, we need to kind of take advantage of this board. If he's just going to play, say, a big dude like Garen, uh, then that's kind of okay, since we can follow up with the with the Ravenous Flock. And so this is going to get a decent block onto a House Spider. Oh, he's taking the, the full-out trade. That's fine as well. But if, right, if he plays just a big dude here, we're going to have uh, ample ways to take it down. <laughs> Duty. <laughs> that's a that's a poop joke. You're welcome. Um, I'm just here to bring the people what they need. So we'll take a, a fresh little block on these. We can drop in a Dreadway deckhand. It's going to give us a powder keg. Now we're ready to make it rain the board away. Oh, we're going to get all three. We're going to get all three, fam. Two of the three. That's not bad. But see, this gets our, our Swain leveled up really quick, right? He's up to uh, nine ticks now that we did the double damage. Uh, did the did the double damage make it rain? Six is just such a quick level up with him. Now he's here to party. Okay. We can, we can flip him, right? We have the Ravenous Flock to send at this Vanguard Redeemer. I didn't play it last turn because that feels like a pretty low value target. But uh, now that uh, now that we have access to Swain, you got to stop and think if you want to, to to deal the damage. And I think we want to keep our Swain back now that he's played the Vanguard Cavalry. It's just like a little scary. I, I like the idea of just letting him hang out and then trying to deal uh, with the big unit with this variety of ravenous flocks. We can send another ravenous flock back into the deck uh, 
once we have the Leviathan down. I think this is okay. These, these units like the Redeemer are just crappy. And Katarina. You're gonna be ready to party next turn. All the birds coming in now. <laughs> and then do Katarina stuff next turn. Alright. Now, do we want to get, like, really involved with this combat? Like, I'm good to double Ravenous Flock here. That's certainly going to happen. Just taking eight isn't that big of a deal. And then we're going to get stuns next turn with the uh, with the, the Swain-Leviathan combo. And then we can even look to, to be beyond that with our Katarina. And we can throw a Blade's Edge at face and get an additional stun afterwards. So, I think we should be good. I guess the real question, we're taking the damage now, it's too late, but if we should have uh, Ravenous Flocked the Redeemer, which I, I think we probably should have. We took an extra four damage there, but just getting the lockdown on both of his units on board before we even bring Katarina in, probably just too good. Now that it's the holiday season, we watched the uh, the classic film Love Actually last night. This ties into the Three Die Raven, and so <laughs> if you uh, if you watched the Game of Thrones, Bran of course goes on the epic quest to find a tree and a bird. He has to travel through uh, un unseen uh, dangers in the lands of the North, and he goes with that that kid and the girl. It, it was supposed to be an interesting plot line as to where those kids were. There was Ned Stark. Ned Stark's best friend was those kids' parents. And they mentioned it like once and then never brought it back. But uh, the the boy, the kid running with that, that's Liam Neeson's kid in, uh, in Love, actually. So it doesn't have like the entire Game of Thrones cast in it, but I think there was one more that made its way in there. And then, of course, there's... Uh, uh, Oh, not not Game of Thrones. It's like it just it's oh the the one that was coming to mind was Rick Grimes from the uh, uh, the Walking Dead. Say say what you will about the show, I don't care about that. But it is so jarring to have like Rick Rick Grimes. You know, it's supposed to be from the the south of the United States and the accent that he carries, and then he's just like boom. I'm from I'm from the England. I'm from the United Kingdom, and he's got that English accent. <laughs> it's it's wild. It's wild. But uh, yeah. It's a big cast, superstar cast. It's got, got everybody in there. But here we're fine. Opponent, uh, opponent appears to have quit. We're just going through the through the paces. We have done what is did it? We did what was needed. Good job, team. Okay. Good stuff with Swain. I, I assumed that Swain was just going to be a be a nutter in the <laughs> in this format. It just he's he's so good in the current format uh, that well he he was before Aatrox came out, but he was he was so good that uh, you have to imagine that we are at six sets now. Uh, the the Darken Saga was set number six that he was going to be uh, he was going to be good uh, when you drop it back down to two. And so up against this other stuff, I'm curious what opponent's doing here with Thresh Trindamir. We can leave that one up if we want. It's probably going to be the kind of uh, the, the the kind of deck that we hate, but we'll take scouts into it anyways. Like I, it just strikes me as being a deck that just has a ton of removal in it, and we should just be playing the Twisted Fate deck. But we'll see if he brings it. Interesting. He brings Timo. Timo. Uh, it, it strikes me as tough. At some point, we're going to play. Uh, we're, we're going to play Teemo with uh, Sejuani. It's just one of the decks we're going we're gonna to get out here, but there are just like so many uh, Make It Rains and Twisted Fates and, and ways to deal that one point of damage to take him off the board. It's just, uh, just a horrible time for the little guy, you know? <laughs> he, he, really, he really struggles with the, the units that are out there. But Teemo and the Dong are the, the Yordles coming at us this round fine to go ahead and start trying to whittle away at this. We have uh, a Ranger's Resolve to try and protect our board uh, if we need to, so we can let him kind of wear us down and set up a Withering Whale, and hopefully we just have the good counter spell for it. It's 
This is okay. I mean, I would assume that he attacks with the peddler. Maybe not. Maybe he's too important. I'm okay with that, though. Some of these good combats in now. So you do have to worry about the the misfortune here just a little bit. If he has a uh, a burn spell, he could have say sent this mystic shot at misfortune and then blocked her with a puff cat peddler. But it doesn't look to be the case here. This is a, a pretty decent attack for us. We're gonna have to overbank this turn by one, but not the end of the world. And what I think we're gonna want to do now is we've got like just not a lot of stuff happening in our hand. Uh, I, I think we're gonna look to protect our misfortune here. That's a, that's a fact. And then we're gonna rally this turn and then next turn play Genevieve. And so the second attack with Genevieve should be enough to get our uh, get our misfortune flipped. So she's strong now. Would be nice if Relentless Pursuit could give her a, uh, a point of health, but, you know, not the way the game works anymore. <laughs> and then next turn, once the Genevieve comes down, we'll still have that one mana backed up for a Ranger's Resolve. Seems good. All right, squad, let's do our thing. Defend these forests right to the end. Good job, Genevieve. That's so nice of you. I didn't know that was your... Uh, <laughs> I didn't know uh, forest defensory was your one of your strong suits. So I'm going to pull in the big boy here. I still suspect opponent has like a one damage AoE or something, but we might as well come in and try and clear out the good units. I think this Ranger's Resolve is going to be huge. Uh, Grasp of the Undying. That's not ideal. Not ideal. Okay, still decent board clear. Like, we, we could have gone big here and tried to protect the Genevieve. We have some decent attacks on the next turn, but it's just like, if I wanna like stop and think about what opponent's trying to do, he's playing a Teemo Heimerdinger deck. He probably cares about the puff caps you know, a reasonable amount. And I think getting those puff cap peddlers cleared off of the board uh, is just going to be ultimately be pretty useful. Like, this is a scary Teemo. I thought we were going to have a chance to take him down with Make It Rain, but he's apparently put a lot more puff caps into our deck than I thought. Okay. So this is this is kind of tough, right? I, I I like the idea of having make it rain to take down turrets, but like that's kind of slow. I, I like I'm thinking if we like make it rain now and then hit the the spiderling, we're just gonna have better attacks next turn. We missed, but I think this is okay. If we're in the space to where we had the four Demacia and the back to back. Might just be dead now. We're gonna have to I'm gonna say he's gonna do something and we're gonna have to back to back. Maybe we can get out of this though. If we attack and he doesn't block with uh, Heimerdinger or Teemo, then we can kill with back to back. I don't think we want to play the four Demacia here. That just advertises that uh, a advertises that we you know need to be blocked. But I think there's a chance he leaves some units back here. Let's us go for the kill. Alright. So we're unfortunately lined up right into vengeance range here <laughs> there's a, a lot of spells opponent can have to get out of this but uh, again i i think if we roll into the next turn we're just dead 
Uh, he, he's, his deck has unlocked everything that it wants to do. Uh, I think we just have to go for it. And it, it paid off here. But if you're not going to go for it at that space, right? What, what do you expect to have happen? You're going to go to the next turn. Opponent, even if they just cast one spell, they're, they're going to double up our puff caps again. They're, they're going to have the turret that they currently have in hand plus another turret plus whatever that spell does. And the chances of us actually winning the game on the follow-up attack, assuming that we survive all the puff caps, is just is super low. I, I really like uh, taking our shot there, and it, it paid off in that game. All right. GG. See if we play that same guy again. I, I, I've been meaning to, to like pause and wait so we don't just play the same person over and over and over again, but it, it slips my mind on occasion. So with this, we've done two scouts. We've done two of the Teemo deck, or two of the of the Twisted Fate deck. I was going to play Sejuani, but he, he banned it out. So well, we'll just have to come in with our, with our uh, powder kegs, you know. All right. Reasonable enough start. He's playing scouts. We can come out and, and interact with the early game reasonably well. And then if we pick up one of our AoEs, uh, just it, it just clears out so much if they don't have uh, the Ranger's Resolve to stop you. All right, let's just keep passing. If he plays a dude, you know, if he adds a, a rando 2-2 or something, we can respond with the hired gun. Try and take it down after the fact. And then if we... Just go into next turn with a three bank. Uh, that That's pretty fine as well. We're not that unhappy to be banking mana. No, it's like I'm kind of tempted to get a, uh, a pool shark onto the board this turn because our hand doesn't really do anything, right? We, we've got the Leviathan for 100 turns from now, but in terms of what's happening right here, doesn't really do anything, and so that didn't turn up. But I think this is still okay. We just need time, right? Scouts can't outvalue the Leviathan. So, let's see what turns up. It's like, <laughs> I, I, I see these Jagged Butchers and just wonder if we can get an attack in. Looks like we might. We'll at least get one Boosted Butcher. probably not too greedy. And then leaving your units at one health just doesn't feel good. So much AoE. Bird and Katarina. Nice. Nice nice additions to the to the family. So what I'm looking at with this, he has the Bright Steel Protector now, which is kind of whatever. I was going to say what I'm looking at if he doesn't have something like that. So we have uh, a Blade's Edge to the face, we have a Ravenous Flock for this guy, and then we have a Jagged Butcher. Uh, but do we want to, to change that up now that he's played a Vanguard Sergeant? I think we do. We can add in the Deckhand, um, and then that'll give us a 3 damage Blade's Edge that we can now throw at the Vanguard Sergeant. Okay, that's not enough. These these kegs they booming. <laughs> they they are popping off this turn. Zero percent chance. You you have to be able to deduce that if your opponent just throws down a powder keg right before you attack, that that thing's going off. That's gonna pop. Oh, he doesn't force the issue though. I think we still want to do it, but we we could have just rolled into the next turn and tried to pick up something good. Again, not a great collection of blocks. I think he puts the the three one in front of our three three. It's like he's about to do some kind of shenanigan. I'm not sure what that would be coming out of Demacia. Do not care about back to back. Okay. Maybe he doesn't he doesn't know how the the Katarina interactions work. No one gets 
in my way. Letting that bloodshed begin. Dropping in a blade's edge. We're attacking again. Yeah, we'll lose that jagged butcher eventually, but the, the attacks are just too good right now. Hit him for seven. He has no board. Next turn, we get to drop the Leviathan. That should be enough to end it. Do we ever? It's like, do we ever just win attacking now? Just playing Katarina this turn? It's not, it's not that tempting of enough to, not that tempting enough to find out. Now, would we like to just guillotine the Genevieve? That's a actual real question. Hmm. It's like, I, I don't want this turn to just pass. I don't think opponent just passes frequently. It's like, how does he, he just gives up. He's like, how do you ever win the game if you're not clearing out board with Genevieve here? But... I, it's like I, I don't want to just like preemptively add the Leviathan because that just signals that you get to to take down our units on board for free. So I'm not sure there. That's tough. Different person. Yeah, we got Venga Tranquilo now. He's got got scouts. He's got Sejuani twisted or Sejuani gangplank, and he's got the sea monsters again. We're gonna come in and just ban out the sea monsters. Hope you didn't want to see those today. It just lines up too well with what our decks do. So we'll get that one out of here see who he leaves up if he we'll, we'll play the sejuani deck if he leaves it up just so we get to come in and see that one again can't can't just show it once and call it a day right Let's see if we get to play this ridiculous mirror match <laughs> i i'm curious if we have any kind of edge in the mirror i'm not like certain on the the list that people are playing with this it's too early in the format but if uh our addition of both Yordle Grifter and Black Market Merchant to draw cards out of the opposing deck, right? We're both doing the exact same strategy. And so getting to draw uh, draw these cards out of the opposing deck can be quite good. Let's see if he's got a dude. He does. We can lead in with Pull Shark. Uh, uh, like, I, I think people attack here frequently. It's just so important to get that point of damage in. Nice, and he didn't. We lose that on a zap. That's kind of sad. But I, I think we just have to open at this point. It's like if he's not attacking on his turn, then he's probably not blocking on our turn. Don't think you want to be playing for value here. Just to, It's so important to, uh, to get these Sejuani level ups, get these ticks in. Oh, Parlay was actually quite a good draw if we get the, the, the time to snap it off. Beautiful. Just another turn of him not leveling up his champion. He's going to start getting the level ups now with the uh, the monkey idol, but we're a full two turns ahead, right? We've got two ticks. He's got zero. Such a good spot for us to be in. All right, and then we'll send in Zap. Good chance that he can get in a... Uh, get in a damage unnoticed. Now this one's this spot is is kind of interesting now, uh, like if we make it rain and hit the monkey, right? That's the ideal thing. Hitting the monkey idol isn't terrible either. But it's like if we just attack with the jagged butcher, he's one hundred percent blocking with the monkey, and we don't get any value out of it. Let's just drop it in and see. We have a couple of good hits here. We missed on uh, the the monkey related good ones. But on the more important note, we did hit his face, and that was what we were uh, ultimately trying to achieve on the turn. So I'm just going to stop. I don't think there's a real reason to attack. Uh, if we pick up uh, another Make It Rain or a, par or a Parlay or something, then these are still good targets with the Zap and the Hired Gun to, uh, to, to hit with our spells. And then we should feel pretty decent with this, this Yordle Grifter hitting the Nab. Uh, we, we've got... The, just two cards in our deck, right? We've got a second Sejuani, and we've got a... Uh, ouch. We, we've got a, the Sejuani, and then we've got a... Uh, 
one and treat. You know, this is going to start being painful. Nothing we can do about it. I think we still got to start trying to slap in with the uh, <laughs> with, with leaving him with the one health units, but that was not a good turn. So we got to do the warning shot this turn. Our Sejuani's going to flip next turn. Then it's just going to be a matter of uh, if we can find a, uh, a damage source for the opposing turn. That gangplank out of here, though. Don't want to. Don't want to see any of that nonsense. Yeah, it's like a, I want to attack with the butcher, but he has the the free block in the back line. All right, well, let's see how it goes. We certainly have the better board, and this uh, this zap is going to be exceptionally good next turn. Just like literally every draw in our deck is a superstar as far as zap is concerned, but we're we're just like a little bit too slow to pull that stuff off, right? If we say add zap, and then we have to draw a parlay, and then the parlay like that's just a a, a really slow go at it. So ultimately worried in that sense, but oh, there it is. That's the sauce right there. Gotta prevent the damage. We're getting kinda low. I don't wanna just die here. And with Zap, go in with the monkey idol. Make it rain's looking pretty good here as well. Let's see if this one just straight whiffs again. <laughs> there you go. That's the that's the makeup uh the the makeup make it rain. All right, he's getting all the card advantage out of our deck. A little bit short of a lethal, but our, our board is so good. We should definitely be getting full clears here. We can attack with the monkey idol unit, whatever that is, the powder monkey to the left. And then when it dies in combat, it's going to it's gonna freeze the other team. Say your farewells, bruh. Right, see his team his team's all frostbitten. That's great. Now, this is going to put him at four, which is a, a, a kind of scary place for opponent to be, but I think we want to just go ahead and fury of the north out of this one. Uh, so that any of our one damage cards will just end the game, right? Even our little monkey idol friend down here should be on the on the path to presenting a lethal so we'll we'll play the salvage this turn that should let us draw a uh, warning shot parlay make it rain as potential kill cards and then uh, if not we, we're still looking decent rolling into the next turn I'm not My friends don't. oof parlay gone we whiffed all right, we gotta we gotta deal with the scary situation. This gangplank's gonna flip, right? He's got a warning shot in hand. Not worried about him having these million cards. It's a matter of uh, him getting this big like AOE attack in. Oh man. Hi, right, deck. What can you do for us today? Here's our here's our little monkey friend ready to end the game. <laughs> oh my gosh, he gives us a he gives us a chance. We can play slow speed cards now. Warning shot Yordle Grifter. Who would want any of those? Oh my god. It's 
So you can always look towards just playing the make it rain. You get a one in seven shot chance, uh, a one in seven chance to win three times. Otherwise, what are we dropping in this turn? We should we have to get some kind of blocker onto the board. Yes, it's just a black market merchant. Blows up a parlay. Had to stop and see if we had a way to kill off our powder monkey. We don't we don't initially have one. Alright, fam. You ready to squeeze them cheeks? You know, we don't we don't have any other cards to play, and so let's see if we can't just go ahead and end it. Oh man. Are we gonna lose this one? This is insane. I I I, I feel like we outdid opponent in like every way possible. But uh, I'm not sure how Gangplank works, right? If he attacks with Gangplank and then the Gangplank thing kills the Powder Monkey, if that kills him before the combat damage happens. Not certain. It says opponent's at zero and we're at one. So I'm just not going to put forth any blocks, right? There, there's no reason to give him a way to respond and win the game. So... Oof. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's what's happening. The powder monkey died, and then the, the Sejuani thing hit. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. GG. Well, yeah, not a bad set of battles. Not a bad set of battles. Able to take down victory in the end. And, you know, a, a pretty reasonable set of decks. I, I, I think as the, the format kind of plays itself out... The, the Sejuani Gangplank is going to be kind of a wild card. Uh, I'm not entirely certain the matchup you want to be finding with this, but uh, it, it doesn't have that same kind of like raw power that you get in Constructed as to where, or in Current Constructed to where you have two additional ways to deal damage to your opponent on the opponent's turn, right? You have the, the Tusk Speaker along with the Spirits Within, and then the Spirits Within also gives you that additional way to just win the game in case things go wrong with your champions, right? You should be able to see in these games how incredibly important all of the champions are, and that's just exactly what you're building towards here. You're really this big uh, all-in movement towards the Gangplank and the Sejuani, uh, which is you know strong in this format if you want to consider it a format built on one damage AoEs, uh, but uh, I, I think this one's still kind of the, the wild card of the day. I'm not entirely certain how I feel about it. Scouts, you know, it's fine. Uh, I, I'm not sold on Scouts being like, maybe we should just be sold on Scouts being one of the premier decks of the format. <laughs> like it's, it, it's been a premier deck of the format since the, since the dawn of time. It just feels a little bit different. Uh, when you're not playing the like the Mirai Warden uh, inspired light package, but uh, it, it's probably still good. It's just worth noting that you probably want to bring two. I could even see an argument for three uh, copies of Ranger's Resolve, uh, and it's worth noting that you're uh, really building into those uh, scouts more uh, as to where a, a lot of games in Constructed you can just win with board control and and like one inspired light. Here you, you probably need. Excuse me, you probably need to get two or three scouts on the board and you need to hit with a uh, uh, either a back-to-back -back or a uh, um, for Demacia. And so I'm not certain on here if we'd rather play Genevieve than play uh, Scythria. That's always an option. Um, I, I could see if there's just like a ton of uh, house spiders and uh, Swain decks running around, then you probably want to switch over to Scythria so that you can send in those fearsome based attacks. But... Uh, as it stood today, Genevieve was fine. And then here, what I think to, this is going to be the big, you know, boogeyman of the format is the the Swain deck. Uh, I, I think that you'll probably see more Swains with Twisted Fate than we're going to see with Misfortune, right? Currently in Constructed, you see uh, Swain typically with Misfortune uh, and then in a much more aggressively oriented deck. But uh, the, the, the Swain should be the, the kind of superstar of the format right now and, and what everyone kind of builds around. So in the previous format, if we were building around the Anivia deck, I, I think in this current format, we're going to be building around Swain. And so Make It Rain will be the big one and Swain will be the big one. But uh, hopefully you got to see, you know, some of the the, uh, the value in playing this more mid-rangey, control -y version of Swain. Uh, you get so many quick level ups 
with the powder kegs and then the either the Make It Rain or the Twisted Fate AoE. Uh, just a, a super fast way uh, to get him to pop. You don't have... Uh, they don't have to play bad cards like Imperial Demolitionist um, to, to get him leveled up. So lots of good and strong and powerful stuff here. This is another space to where I'm not sure uh, the, the champion split. You know, uh, uh, Katarina belongs in the format. We should be playing Katarina in some, uh, some way. Uh, I'm not certain if, you know, she just belongs in here as the one of, or if we should be playing a 2-2-2, two, 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 or uh, if even like, She's just better than Twisted Fate. I'm not. I'm not going to go that far, at least with this specific deck to where we're playing the the six powder keg makers. But um, Katarina probably just belongs somewhere as well. She's ultimately just way too powerful of a champion to to not be playing. And so, good stuff. I had fun with that. I hope you did too, because that is going to do it for us today. And so, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. I hope you maybe learned a thing or two along the way and had a good time watching. This is Bustin' Me. Thank you for being here. <laughs>